Welcome to the SolidCam Professor video series called Jumpstart, the easy way to learn SolidCam. In this session, we will be going through part two of our first lesson, where we will add a face mill operation to our cam part and then run through the operation dialog. We will be using the same cam part that we've just created in our first video. If you are starting the lesson here, Please download the SolidCam part file included with this video tutorial and open it. If you are just joining us, we will be saving all of our downloaded part files in a training folder that we've created on our C drive. Let's begin by adding our face milling operation to remove the excess material on top of this part. Right click on the folder called Operations in the CAM Manager. When we do that, a drop-down appears with a list of operations we can add to our part. We can then select the option Face. Now, our operation dialog appears and shows the workflow in SolidCam. As we move on through our lesson, we'll notice that almost all of our operations follow this same type of workflow. In the operation dialog and moving down the tree, we will start off with our geometry followed by creating our tool, choosing the levels we want to work on, selecting the type of technology we want to use for this particular operation, and choosing our links of how we want to lead in and lead out of our part. Working in order, let's define our geometry. We have several ways to choose our geometry around the part. Our geometry is the boundary that actually controls where our toolpath will be created. Now since we've set our model as the target, we can choose the option of model as our base geometry. Instead of clicking on define here, let's choose target from this drop down menu. This selection will automatically create a boundary around the outside of the part. And that's exactly where we want our toolpath to work. Next we will select our tool. Since we have yet to create a tool, I will show you how to build one. For this operation, our tool type will be a face mill. The next dialog box we encounter has quite a few options, but we are only going to focus on two of the tabs for right now, topology and tool data. Tool topology allows us control over the physical dimensions of the tool. In this particular case, we will be using a 100 millimeter face mill. We can also set corner radius, arbor diameter, total length, outside holder length, and cutting length. Next is our tool data where we can control our feeds and speeds. Once satisfied with our settings, we can press select to accept our tool. Looking at our workflow, next on the tree are levels. First up is clearance level, whose value is pulled from our coordinate system setting. Next is safety distance, which is pulled from the MAC file of our post processor. Then on to upper level, which in this case will be the top of our stock. Then finally, face depth, which represents the surface we want to machine to. That completes the setting of our levels. Let's now move on to technology. In the technology branch, we have several technologies to choose from, which are chosen through this drop down menu. We have our hatch option which is pictured here giving us a back and forth tool path and stepping over until our entire surface is machined. Our second option is contour, which drives around our chain and stepping from the outside in until it machines our surface, as shown by the picture. The third option is one pass. Because our tool is wider than our part, we can machine the entire face in only one pass, as evidenced by the picture. Our last and most rarely used option is Auto, 
Auto is used for complex face geometry, where there are many pockets in the part. This option would allow us to face only the top of the walls, and it creates a shortest distance toolpath on such complex faces. For this exercise, we will use one pass. We also have the option of taking a finish pass by adding a value to our floor offset field and checking the finish box. In this case, we will not add a finish pass. Moving down the tree, the last branch to touch on is link. Having selected our one pass option in technology, we only have two options for lead in and lead out. They are none and tangent. None simply means that the tool will not be leading into or leading out of the cut. By selecting tangent, we can actually lead into and out of the cut through these values set by us, the user. If we would like to keep our lead out the same as our lead in, we can check the same as lead in box and it will set the lead out equal to the lead in. For this particular operation, we will choose none for our lead in and lead out. Now we can click save and calculate in order to calculate and view our toolpath. And this concludes part two of our first lesson in the Solid Cam Jumpstart series, where we've added a face milling operation to our cam part and then ran through the operation dialog. Thanks for watching. Please join us for part three of our first lesson, where we will simulate our toolpath and go over the simulation dialog.